The 2024 All-American Futurity coverage on StallionEsearch.com is brought to you by the Stallion roster of Robichaux Ranch Incorporated in Brobridge, Louisiana. And hello again, everyone. I'm Greg Thompson of StallionEsearch.com here in Albuquerque, previewing the All-American Futurity. And as most of you know, going into the finals here on Labor Day weekend, we have a Triple Crown possibility still alive and well in Tr Toby Keaton train. He's got the look Z. Now this horse, of course, won the first two legs going into this final weekend, qualifies as the second fastest overall Overall, going into the finals with jockey Brian Cannonoso board. Now there's been multiple horses, a total of four since the inception of 1959 of the very first All-American Futurity. Four horses have been in this scenario prior to going into the finals of the All-American Futurity with one of them, only one of them, being the victor in 1981 with special effort winning the Triple Crown. Let's take a look at the history of some of these horses that went almost to the end of, and, and almost grabbed that glory like Special Effort did. And of course, what he's got the look Z will hope to do this coming Labor Day. Let's look at the brief history of the Quarter Horse Triple Crown. The All-American Futurity, of course, got its start in 1959. And Walt Wiggins Sr. is credited with coming up with the actual coinage of the Quarter Horse Triple Crown, which included the Kansas Futurity, the Rainbow Futurity and the All-American Futurity. And it wasn't until 1974 before we had the first glimpse at a potential Triple Crown when Tiny's Gay went into the finals of the All-American Futurity with a chance, but only to come up short to James MacArthur trained Easy Date at the wire. And it would be seven years before we saw another resurgence of a possible Triple Crown winner in Special Effort in 1981 as Special Effort mowed his way through the Kansas Futurity win on to capturing victory in the 1981 Rainbow Futurity. It's a summer encounter up along the inside rail. It's a 71 South and a between horses. It's a Struck Silver, six double. It's a special effort in front. And then of course capturing Quarter Horse Immortality in 1981 in the slop to win the All-American Futurity thus being the one and only Triple Crown winner we've had in the sport. There they go. Apollonia outside, special effort is going to the front between horses. Arrow's request is second. Apollonia inside, rail. Here comes a classic native. Now on the outside is special effort. Special effort. Go for Bob's cute investment. A driving finish, special effort in front. But there have been others that came close. 1993, treacherously with Nancy Summers aboard, trained by Sam Sandoval, went into the All-American Futurity in 1993 after winning both the Riodosa Futurity and the Rainbow Futurity, but would come up short on Labor Day. And he's a fast man, hit the wire right. To... And it wouldn't be until 2021 when John Steinbow trained Just Saving Candy would be victorious in both the Riodosa Futurity and the Rainbow Futurity and would qualify into the All-American Futurity, but also to come up short on Labor Day. Now Toby Keaton trained, he's got the look Z, enters into this Labor Day weekend after being victorious in both the Riodosa Futurity and the Rainbow Futurity, and also qualifying as the second fastest qualifier going into the finals of this All-American Futurity Classic. We were able to talk to both the jockey and the trainer of this potential Triple Crown hopeful as he goes into the finals in this $3 million grade one event. Toby, talk about the uh, the takeaway from the trial race for he's got the look Z. And Greg, he left there, he just, I mean, he left there in front and just, Brian just sat on him, you know, and thought he was going, I'm glad he went fast enough because he didn't ask him really to run the other day. And horse come back really good, not tired, not nothing, just didn't take much out of him. You could physically, or we could visually see that Brian let up a little bit on, yes, on him to did. kind of conserve. Talked about the importance of doing that. Well, you got to have some fuel left in your tank for the finals and you know, them trial, the other trial races, man, he was all out. He was all out in the freaking dirty finals that he won them two. And shit, we need to save something, you know. And you know, Greg, it's like you work your way up and you try to work your butt off. And sometimes it don't work out. And I've just been blessed in the last couple of years with some great horses. And next year it might not happen. So you better enjoy it while it's happening because 
I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just, when you go to the barn in the morning, it's, I mean, you, you want to get up and go to the barn because you wonder what all them good horses are doing, you know. And There's been times when I walk in there and they might be one good one out of 50, you know, and that's a bad feeling, but it's it's just been a good ride and I'm going to stay on it till it ends. So he, he entered really good, Greg, and uh, stands are perfect and he always, he always leaves really, really, really good and just kept running along and maybe about 400 yards down, he felt horses coming to him and he switched leads and caught another gear. For as small as he is, I think he can run all day, so hopefully we can pull it off Labor Day. Introducing the stallion roster of Robichaux Ranch Incorporated in Brobridge, Louisiana. The talented Dasha Dynasty, the son of champion sire FDD Dynasty, who is a half-brother to multi-millionaire champion. He's a Dasha Fire and millionaire champion I'm a Fearless Hero. Dasha Dynasty seen here winning the town policy stakes at Los Alamitos Racecourse. Dasha Good Reason. A half-brother to Dasha Dynasty, he's a Dasha Fire, and I'm a Fearless Hero, is the son of multiple champion sire Good Reason SA, and was a finalist in the Grade 1 Los Al 2 Million Futurity and the Grade 1 Los Al Super Derby, and three Grade 2 Stakes events. The Grade 1 All-American Derby winner, Goldheart Eagle V, the son of one famous eagle, is now siring graded stakes winners of his own including Grade 2 Laddie Futurity winner Gold Gun Z and Grade 1 $1 million Heritage Place Futurity runner-up Fiery Eagle. Also introducing the two-time AQHA champion Grade 1 winning KPN Corona. The son of Corona Cartel was a Grade 1 winner with earnings of over $868,000 and is now siring Grade 1 winners of his own, such as Grade 1 Ed Burke Futurity winner Political Rivalry and Heritage Place Oaks winning Miss KVN and Rio Dosa Juvenile Challenge winner MFS Cheerio, just to name a few. Also standing at Robichaux Ranch, the AQHA champion runner and stakes winner of over $429,000, Tarzanito, winner of the Sgt. Pepper Feature Handicap as a runner, is now also a graded stakes producing sire. With his daughter Blue-Eyed Jane, the winner of the Grade 3 Sam Houston Juvenile Challenge as a two-year-old. The talented roster of Dasha Dynasty, Dasha Good Reason, Goldheart Eagle V, KVN Corona, and Tarzanito, all standing at Robichaux Ranch Incorporated in Brobridge, Louisiana.